That's what happens when you have student loan forgiveness for gender studies degrees. President Joe Biden is apparently set to announce that he is going to cancel some student debt. And nobody's happy. <laughs> so in this video, I will go over who has a reason to be unhappy, but also who is complaining and have absolutely not even just a reason not to complain, but also the obvious hypocrisy in their complaints over any cancellation of student debt. So first, quickly here on what Biden is likely set to announce. So from Common Dreams, fresh reporting out Monday night indicates that President Joe Biden is leaning toward canceling $10,000 in federal student loan debt for borrowers with annual incomes below $125,000, a means-tested plan that would f fall well short of progressive lawmakers' call for the administration to wipe at least $50,000 off the books for all borrowers. According to CNN, Biden's long-awaited announcement of student debt cancellation could come as early as Wednesday, a week before the student loan repayment and in interest freeze that's been in effect since 2020 is set to end. All right, so I'll get to a little more on the criticisms coming from the left over this. But first, let's just, you know, set the, the stage here. Robert Reich, this is back in April, but it still applies today. Student debt, $1.89 trillion. GOP tax cut for the rich, $1.9 trillion. Who else would like to live in a country where we bail out students who need it instead of CEOs who don't? So there are so many cases, and we'll get to a specific example of corporations getting loan forgiveness, getting all the benefits in the world, whether it's tax cuts, whether it's loans forgiven. Yet, if anything tiny, even as tiny as 10 grand or up to 10 grand, 10 grand is the, the max apparently, up to 10 grand is canceled for somebody who is drowning in debt, can't afford to live, can't afford to start a family, then there are all these complaints from these wealthy individuals who have been given every single break imaginable. Now, this is where we get to Steven Crowder saying student loan forgiveness sounds really nice to illegal immigrants people with no life experience, people who don't have families yet, and people who use preferred pronouns. Again, just every single, you know, uh, attempt here to try and speak to a very disconnected conservative audience that has no real understanding of what people are actually going through on a regular basis. But anyways, so Crowder, not a big fan of this either. Do not forgive student loans. Here's a quick clip of him uh, discussing this. That's what happens when you have student loan forgiveness for gender studies degrees. These people are going to be building our planes. We're going to talk about that today and why it's the greatest transfer of wealth to upper middle class Americans from the poor that's ever taken place. Ah, uh, yes, the greatest transfer of wealth to upper class Americans, because we all know the wealthy take out student loans. Just the stupidest. If you ever hear this argument, <laughs> it's your duty to stop and correct how stupid that argument is. What wealthy people are taking out student loans, and if they are, how are they not paying them back? People that take out student loans take them out because they need to take out loans. Why would you take out a loan only to have to pay more back if you can already afford to go to school if you're wealthy? Again, this idea is absurd. And, and to be clear, it isn't just the right that pushes us this garbage. It's also people, part of the Democratic Party, like people like uh, Hillary Clinton, that push this idea. Why should we cancel student loans for Donald Trump's kids? That was one of her points during a debate. <laughs> Donald Trump's kids ain't taking out student debt. So very dumb. But anyways, what I find kind of interesting is if you go to this tool, I'll link to this below the video on YouTube. This is the ProPublica tracking PPP tracking the Paycheck Protection Program loans that were given out, and many of them forgiven. So uh, Jeff from Regina, again, you could search up all this stuff yourself, but I want to give him credit here because I saw him post this. Here is Louder with Crowder. This is uh, Steven Crowder's company here, LLC. They took out 70 grand, $71,000 forgiven. You know who is wealthy? Steven Crowder. Yet, here he is, having $71,000 forgiven. One of the greatest transfers of wealth from the poor 
to the wealthy that I've ever seen. But that's how garbage these people are. Another example here, Daily Caller. So they have this piece, Biden must decide soon on whether to wipe away student loan debt. Here's facts he can't ignore. The first paragraph alone is hilarious. The Biden White House is reportedly considering forgiving $10,000 worth of student loan debt for some borrowers, a move that is likely illegal. <laughs> I'll get to how it's not illegal in a minute here, but likely illegal and definitely will increase inflation and force poor people to subsidize rich people. Again, this stupid idea that somehow rich people are taking out student loans. Well, let's check out the Daily Caller. So again, you can go here. I did. Searched up Daily Caller and found that their loan is massive. 407,000 taken out, 410 forgiven, $410,000. And here they are complaining about 10 grand, maybe being illegal and a, a poor people subsidizing the rich. This place, by the way, Daily Caller was founded by Tucker Carlson, who, <laughs> is the heir to a massive, uh, the massive Swanson dinner fortune. So come on, like they needed this? Give me a freaking break. This from uh, Matt and Knox here is saying, friendly reminder, 99% of those who do the righteous indignation bit over student loan forgiveness never said a goddamn thing when Trump and Biden both signed laws providing forgivable loans to the likes of Grover Norquist, Tom Brady, and the Ayn Rand Institute. So three more examples here of people who fight back or who are conservative, fight back against anything, any kind of help for the poor and marginalized. And here they are taking out, you know, massive loans from PPP and get, having them forgiven. Now, to the criticisms of this plan, which clearly does not go far enough. So progressives who were quick to, or were quick to make clear their dissatisfaction with the la latest update on the president's plan, which while fulfilling a campaign promise, would leave millions saddled with massive student debt balances. The average federal student loan debt balance is 37,667, according to the Education Data Initiative. Student debt is nearly a $2 trillion crisis, tweeted at Cori Bush, a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. POTUS must cancel student debt, all of it. Proponents of full-scale debt cancellation argue that the president has the legal authority to order the Education Department to eliminate all outstanding student loan debt, a move they say would come with economic and political benefits while steering clear of the bureaucratic mess that inevitably accompanies uh, means-tested programs. So... And yeah, I mean, there are countless arguments against against means testing, but one of the obvious ones is just the amount of the fact that you would have to spend more money just to figure out who should or shouldn't get the loan as opposed to just forgiving all of it and the amount of bureaucracy you would avoid by just canceling what exists, the, the loans that are uh, on the books. I mean, this is clearly uh, nowhere near enough. That said, Biden did only promise 10 grand while he was running. That's who people voted for. So it's not like if he, you know, if he cancels to, or 10 grand, he would be fulfilling his campaign promise. That said, uh, I think it's clearly fair to criticize why it doesn't go far enough. But more here from the Debt Collective. So they uh, write here, President Biden can cancel all federal student loan debt with a simple executive order. So he wrote the entire executive order for him. All he has to do is sign this piece of paper. And I'll link to this below the video. But as Common Dreams goes on to write here, this is from um, their executive order. Quote, when initially created in the Higher Education Act of 1965, the modern student loan program was meant to help make our higher education system more equal. The two-page document reads, today, it does the opposite, imposing huge burdens on those households with the least inherited wealth, deepening the racial wealth gap, and making higher education an enormously risky endeavor for those with the least capacity to bear risk. Student loan debt now prevents millions of people from pursuing their dreams. So I've discussed this issue at length in other videos, but it, it's clear when you cancel student debt, it f then frees people up to put their money back into the economy. It benefits them, it benefits society, it benefits the ability for them to actually move on with their life, start a life, start a family, have kids. There's all these complaints about, you know, Millennials aren't having kids. They aren't having kids because they can't afford to. So you 
unburden them from this, this student debt. And that opens the ability, if that's what you care about, people having more kids, it allows them to then potentially pursue starting a family because they no longer have the burden of that student debt. Now, lastly here is also the racial wealth gap um, aspect of this that I want to quickly explore uh, with these last two tabs. So Nina Turner here tweets out canceling $10,000 in student debt when the average white borrower is $12,000 in debt, while black women hold an average over $52,000 isn't just unacceptable, it's structural racism. And she is Correct on that. So as CBS News writes, advocates for canceling student loan debt have also argued it's a way to build racial equity. Studies show black borrowers often have to take out larger amounts of student debt for higher education. After graduation, the average student debt held by black borrowers is higher than the burden held by white and brown borrowers, studies found. So multiple reasons here to cancel a lot more than $10,000 and Regardless, no one's happy. <laughs> this is this is the problem. You can't. God, the way Biden is is running things is is the way. First of all, that we all said he would be running things in a the typical neoliberal classic, you know, '90s Democrat fashion, where it's concern for massive corporations, concern for the wealthy, and then crumbs for everyone else, and they call it, you know, a, a massive step forward. So this is simply another example of that. And it hurts them not just, um, you know, politically, but it also hurts people. I mean, if you want to be able to build an actual working class base of, of voters that will come and support you, if, look, if all you cared about is winning as a Democratic politician, if that is all you cared about, for, you know, putting aside helping society, which is what should motivate you, but even if, putting that aside, if all you care about is winning, the winning strategy is to actually speak to the needs of the working class by addressing what is holding them down, what is burdening them. Student debt is at the center of that. So by only canceling a little bit, you're essentially making nobody happy. You're pissing off conservatives and the right's going to be pissed off regardless. They're going to complain regardless of what you do. So you might as well actually go ahead and do what is within your authority and cancel all student debt.